Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey, and here let's learn to build a free online leaderboard. We're going to do this with the help of Microsoft Azure Cloud, learn how to create an Azure function with Azure Storage to read and write some data. We're going to build a demo where we can play our game, get some score, then upload that score to the cloud and display the full leaderboard in-game. For most developers, this is likely completely free since there is a very generous free tier per month. Now, this is a tutorial for how to make an online leaderboard, but really everything covered here can be applied to a multitude of online mechanics. I'm currently working on a video showcasing multiple examples of all of the mechanics that you could build. So you can use this exact logic to make something like the messaging system in Elden Ring or Dark Souls. You can build a histogram like in the Zactronix games. You can construct a shared online world like in Death Stranding, make an asynchronous multiplayer game. You can create your own custom Steam workshop and so on. All of those mechanics share the same base infrastructure that we're going to build here. And the same thing for non-game use cases. This is really a tutorial on creating Azure functions and connecting them with Azure Storage. And if you know nothing about the cloud, then don't worry, it's pretty simple once you learn the basic terms. I cover the basics of Azure in another video, so go watch that just so you know the basics, and with that you should be able to follow everything in this tutorial. Here's everything that we're going to do. We're going to look at my fun starting demo, then create a serverless Azure function called Get Leaderboard. We're going to implement the code in Unity to trigger that Azure function, parse the leaderboard and show it. Then implement Azure Storage to store that leaderboard data. Make another function to add scores to the leaderboard, which will grab the file from storage, add some data and write it back, and put it all together in a nice working demo. There's timestamps for all the parts in the video. Okay, so that's our goal, let's get to it. If you use Unity in any way, definitely get my Ultimate Unity Overview course. It will teach you how to use the many tools and features that Unity has so you can be more effective and make better games faster. There's no need to build something yourself from scratch if there's already a built-in tool that works great. Unity has tons of them that you might not know about. The course already has 15 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine, and is constantly getting free updates. Or if you prefer step-by-step -step courses on making a specific game, check out my Builder Defender course. I also have a full course only on using visual scripting. There isn't a single line of code in any of those games. And if you're past the beginner stage and you want a guided path to help you make the jump from beginner to advanced, then get my turn-based strategy course. It will help you massively improve your programming and game dev skills. On all courses, I'm always available in the Q&A section, answering all of your questions every single day. So check them out with the link in the description. All right, so here let's build a nice free online leaderboard using Azure Functions and Storage. Over here is my demo game. I have my character in third person. I made this in a previous video. Then I have some shooting targets along with some destruction that I also covered in another video. And this is basically the same demo scene that I covered in the Quantum Console video. So I can aim and shoot at the targets. Then I just added some mini game rules. So the targets I spawned and I need to shoot them. Then there's a timer counting down. After the timer is elapsed, we have a game over and out pops out a nice input window. I covered this simple window in a previous video. So it asks the player for the name. I can type in anything. Then press OK and it shows the leaderboard. Now the missing piece is we would like to upload the score to a server so we can see what score other players got. So it's a pretty simple but fun minigame which is going to be the perfect demo for our online leaderboard. Now like I said we're going to be using Azure for our online infrastructure. I made a detailed getting started tutorial in another video, definitely go watch that one before this one. Here I will assume you know everything covered there. So I assume you know the basics of what is the cloud, how Azure works, what is a subscription, resource and so on. And actually, when I said this is free, that's not exactly technically 100% true. Azure has a great pricing calculator. So over here you can see all of the various things that Azure has and you can add them to see how much they cost. The resource that we're going to use is Azure Functions. And if you add them over here, we can see, yep, the cost is indeed $0. So this one is completely free. You have 400 gigabytes per second of execution time and a million executions for free every single month. So unless your game is a mega hit, you're never going to hit this amount. So the functions part is indeed pretty much free. Now the other part to make our leaderboard work is adding some storage. So on the pricing calculator, if we add the storage account, then here if we set up the storage, so in my case, I'm going to use West Europe. We're going to be using blob storage on the standard premium. And now we see that storage does not have any free tier. However, it is extremely cheap since this is going to be a leaderboard, which is a tiny, tiny amount of data pretty much in the order of kilobytes, so not even megabytes and certainly not gigabytes. So if I put the smallest number possible in this calculator on pretty much all of the operations, so 10,000 operations, one gigabyte, 10,000, 10,000, and so on. So if I put pretty much the smallest values on all of these, 
If so, then this comes at a monthly cost of 14 cents per month. And if you have less than these, so less than 10,000 operations and less than one gigabyte, which will definitely be much lower than that, then yep, it's definitely not even going to get to 14 cents. So technically, this leaderboard that we're going to cover here isn't 100% free. Instead, it costs probably around one to five cents per month, which I'm not sure they would even try charging that much. Okay, so let's build our online leaderboard. Now, the first thing we need is on the server side, we need something to listen to an event from our game. So over here on the Azure dashboard, let's create a brand new resource. And over here for the type, for this we have mainly two options. We can use a web API or we can use a function. Both of them work. I covered the web API in the Azure Basics video, but over here, let's actually go with a function since it's so simple and super easy to use. So go ahead and find function, either go down to compute or search for function, and yep, you find the function app. Then let's go through the basic setup. So choose the default subscription. I'm still on the free tier, so yep. Then let's create a new resource group. So in this case, let's call leaderboard tutorial. Then for a function name, let's say tutorial leaderboard code monkey. And yep, the name is available, okay. Next, we want to publish with code, runtime stack, let's go with .NET, version .NET 6, okay. Then region, I want something close to me. So the closest to where I live over here in Portugal, the closest is the one on France Central. Then for operating system, let's go with Windows, which is what I'm using. And for the plan, let's go with consumption, which is the serverless plan. Again, if you think I'm going too fast here, make sure you watch that other video. In there, I covered all of these settings, all of them in detail. Okay, so we have this basic setup and all of the other ones can be the default. So let's go ahead and review and create. Although actually, let me make a note here. In my case, I'm still using the free Azure account. I didn't upgrade yet. And for some reason, when using the free account, over here you see different options. All I can see is basics, then networking, monitoring, and so on. Whereas if you're using a regular Azure account, with that, you might see an extra tab over here for some storage. So if you do see that, then just go ahead and create some storage. But if you're using a free trial account like I have here, then there's no storage option. So let's just go ahead, review and create. And don't worry about that, we're going to manually create some storage in a bit. Okay, here it is, all the settings seem correct, so let's go ahead and create. All right, everything is deploying, let's wait a bit. And yep, deployment completed, so let's go to our resource. All right, so here it is, everything is looking good so far. Again, we see this warning up here because we are on the free tier and we didn't get an option to create a storage account. I will cover how to fix this in a bit when we manually create storage, but still everything should be working fine. So with this, our function app is already running. Now let's create a proper function. Let's go here to the left side under functions and let's click on the button to create a brand new function. Then we've got the development environment. We can choose to develop in portal, meaning inside the browser. So let's use this one for now. And then in the next function, I will showcase how to develop using Visual Studio. So let's go with that. Then for the template, this is how you can trigger the function. As you can see, you've got all kinds of very interesting triggers. So you can make it on a timer, so it triggers every certain time. You can make it based on queue storage, blob storage, event, Cosmos DB, and so on. You can connect it to IoT devices. As you can see, there's tons of really interesting triggers. And the one that we want here is an HTTP trigger. We want this function to run when we get an HTTP request, so similar to a web API. So let's go with this one. Then down here for the function name, let's call it get leaderboard. And for the authorization level, over here you have three options. Function means that we're going to have a function secret key just for this function. Admin would be the same key for multiple functions and anonymous means we don't require a key. So let's go with default option using a function out. Okay. So everything's set up, let's create. All right, the function has been created. We can already try calling it. So up here we can get the function URL and we can generate the URL based on the function key, the host key, master key, and so on. We set it up with the function key, so let's use that one. And note how this URL, first of all, it's the URL that we set, so tutorial leaderboard dash code monkey, so this is the standard function app URL. Then we've got our endpoint, API get leaderboard, and importantly, over here we've got the function code. If we don't include the code, since we defined it to use function as the auth, if we don't include this, then the function won't run. So let's just copy this code, and yep, there it is, everything worked. So here we have our default function return. Okay, so far so good. Now back on the dashboard, over here on the side, let's go to code plus test. We set this function up with a browser environment, so over here we can write some code directly on the browser. And over here, let's begin by making a few changes here and essentially just return some basic JSON. If you don't know what is JSON, check out my video on it. It's a really simple, really useful text-based data format. Now over here for returning JSON, first we need to make a class, so let's make it. 
So let's make a public class, call it leaderboard. Then inside, let's have a list of another type, call leaderboard single. And then that class. For each leaderboard entry, we're going to have a string for the name. And then also we're going to have an int for the actual score. Okay, so this is the basic structure of our leaderboard. Each entry has a name and a score, and then we store a list of our entries. Then up here, let's get rid of all of this default code. Let's just keep the return. So let's remove all of this, just keep this, all right. Then over here, note how by default, it already includes the Newton soft JSON library. So with this, we can easily convert our object into JSON. So let's first create the object, so in leaderboard. All right, so here I created a leaderboard and inside on the array just created two entries. Then for returning it, again, we want to return some JSON. So for the response message, let's go into JSON convert, which again, this is a class inside Newton soft JSON. On this one, let's serialize this object. It's the leaderboard object. And then we just return. Okay, great. Also here, I should point out one thing, depending on the settings that you use for this JSON library, you might see this object convert correctly or maybe not. Maybe you might see some empty JSON. If so, that has to do with the settings. So sometimes the library is only set up to convert the public properties and not public fields. Over here, as you can see, I'm using fields, not properties, which if you're not a Unity developer, you might be used to using properties. But in Unity development, regular fields are the standard, so that's what I'm using here. But like I said, depending on your settings, this might be causing issues and not converting to JSON. So if not, if this returns pretty much empty JSON, if so, then you can just convert these into properties by pretty much just setting a get and a set. So with this, now this is a property instead of a field. So if this was returning empty, then this change should solve it. I just want to quickly point that out because I actually ran into that same issue, which drove me crazy for quite some time. My code wasn't returning any JSON and it took me quite a while to figure out the reason. And it was because it wasn't parsing fields, only parsing properties. So beware about that. But over here, everything should be working fine with fields, just like this. So we can test this. And by the way, another quick note, when writing code here, make sure you are writing everything correctly. This code editor is pretty basic. It works, but it won't tell you if you have some errors or call a function that does not exist. For example, initially, I thought the function on the JSON convert, I thought this was called to JSON instead of serialized object. And if you call that, then there's no red squiggly line. There's nothing telling you that this function does not exist. It will only run when you try to actually run the test. So just be aware that this editor doesn't have any kind of error checking. So if you don't know what is wrong with this, then maybe try copy pasting it into Visual Studio to make sure all of this syntax is correct. And one more final thing before we test, make sure to save the file. So you can press on Control S or up here, click on Save. Then also on this drop down menu over here, we can select which file we want to edit. So let's edit the function.json file. And over here in this file, we see the various methods we have for interacting with this function. By default, we have both a get and a post. But for this function, we just want to get the leaderboard. We don't want any post data. So we can remove that to only allow get requests. Okay, that should do it. Make sure you save this file. Then up here, let's click on test and run. Then over here on the side, let's select our test. So for HTTP method, we made it with a get. So let's go with get. For the key, let's use the default function key. Then we don't have any special queries. We don't have any special headers. And for the body, this is meant to be empty. Okay, so that's it. Super simple. Let's run. And yep, there it is. We have a 200 OK response. And here is our leaderboard with all of our data. All right, so far so good. Down here, you can even see a nice log telling the status. You can see this message here, which is this message here. So you can use this logger object to log any kind of information. All right, so everything is working on the server side. Now let's handle getting this in Unity. Now I already covered how to do HTTP requests in Unity in another tutorial. In there, I made a proper super easy to use class. Although in that video, I also focused mainly just on the get. So I have since upgraded this class to have also a post method as well as a post JSON method. This is what we're going to use in a bit to upload some scores. So I pretty much just improved upon the class made in that video. And this full class is included in the project files for this video, which you can download linked in the description. So for contacting our function, we're just going to use a get. So just need the URL, then we get the return. 
So let's make a script to run our testing code. So we need use C sharp script. Let's call it test leaderboard. Let's make a game object to run it. Let's attach the script and open. Okay, so now here, let's make some super simple code. First of all, let's do our update. And on update, let's test for a key input. So get key down, let's say on the T key. When we get that, then let's use the web requests. We're going to use a get. Then for the URL, let's copy the URL. So back in the dashboard over here, we can go into the overview and let's get the function URL and copy the whole thing. All right, so we just do a get on this URL, then let's capture if we have any error. And let's capture the success response. All right, that's it, super simple, let's test. Okay, so here we are, let's press the T key. And if there you go, here we have our response. So we've got the exact same thing that we said there. So we've got a leaderboard single list with one score and another score. All right, awesome. The next step is to interpret this as JSON. And now for JSON, Unity already has a built-in JSON utility class. So we could use this, but we should probably use the same library just to make sure JSON converts exactly. However, at the same time, the Newtonsoft library also has some issues with Unity types, but still, just for learning purposes, let's learn how to use it. So let's remove this. Then here, let's open up the package manager. So let's open it up. Let's click on the plus icon and let's add a package from a git URL. Then let's add this URL. So com.unity.newtonsoft-json. Let's install this package. All right, there it is, Newtonsoft JSON. This is pretty much that package, but made by Unity, meant to use it while inside Unity. All right, so back in the dashboard over here, let's copy both these, the leaderboard and the leaderboard single. And yep, over here on the Unity project, let's paste those classes. So we now have these two types. So let's go into the test leaderboard script. So over here, we've got the response. All right, so let's deserialize this data. So first we need using newtonsoft.json. And then over here, let's use the same thing. So JSON convert. And this guy is, let's deserialize the object into a leaderboard. And it's going to be our response. Then just as a quick test to make sure this is working, let's do a debug.log, go into leaderboard, access the single list, the first one, and let's print out the name. Okay, so let's see if this log works. And if there it is, the log did work. It did grab the response, it did parse it, and did grab the name for the very first leaderboard. Now let me briefly mention the issue with this library and Unity types, just so you know. If you ever want to store something using, for example, a vector3, so up here if you make a public class, call it say vector3, and inside really just have a vector3. If we do this, then up here let's try using Newtonsoft JSON to serialize this type. So let's do JSON convert. Let's serialize this object. Let's create a new save vector3. And let's put some vector3, so vector3.up doesn't really matter. So let's see if this line does work. And nope, over here we have our error. It's saying self-referencing loop detected on the property normalized. Basically it's trying to serialize the normalized property, which in itself is a vector3, which in itself has a normalized and so on and so on. So this is a pretty big issue with this specific library when using the specific Unity Vector3. And yet another issue is with the c -sharp Vector3 type. So here is the default Vector3 inside system.numerics. And over here we can see it does have fields for the X, Y, and Z, but note how these are capitalized. Whereas in Unity they are not capitalized and they have some more things. So basically all of this to say that if you want to save some Vector3s, then you should be using Unity's built-in JSON utility. You should be using that to serialize it as opposed to using this JSON convert. And then on the Azure function C sharp side, on there, make sure you create a custom vector three with the X, Y, and Z exactly like Unity. Again, the reason why I'm mentioning these issues is because I stumbled upon them while doing my own research. It drove me crazy for quite a bit. So hopefully now you won't fall for those same problems just like I did. Okay, so with this, we have our working leaderboard object. So over here, we get the leaderboard, all right. Then over here, I have a leaderboard UI element that I prepared previously. It's pretty much what I made in the high score table video. It's just a basic UI element. 
has some background, so on, and then an entry for a high score entry. Then it has this leaderboard UI script. And on this one, I've got this public function showing leaderboard, which takes a leaderboard object. Then it cycles through all of the leaderboard single entries lists, sorts them all by their score. It destroys the previous entries on the list and creates a brand new ones. So just a pretty simple UI element. On our testing script, let's just call this function. So over here, after we get the leaderboard object, let's go into the leaderboard UI, access the static instance, and let's call show and pass in our leaderboard. All right, that's it. So let's test and see if this is accessing our URL to get the leaderboard that we have stored in our function and then displaying that in our UI. So here we are, let's press the button. And if there you go, there's our nice leaderboard. So with this, we are successfully contacting our online function and displaying the results. All right, awesome. Now the next step is to make this dynamic instead of always returning the same result. For that, we're going to need some storage and then connect our function to it. But before that, let's actually make another function just very quickly without any special behavior. So let's make one, but actually this time, instead of adding it over here on dashboard by hitting create like we did, instead of that, instead of using the browser environment, let's use it with Visual Studio. So let's open up Visual Studio. Over here, I'm using version 22 community. Also, make sure your Visual Studio installation has the Azure module installed. If you're not sure, go ahead and run the Visual Studio installer. Then on your Visual Studio install, click on modify. And up here, make sure you have Azure Development and probably also the ASP.NET. So make sure those modules are installed. Then on Visual Studio, let's go ahead and create a new project. For the project type, let's scroll down and find Azure Functions. So let's use this type. Then let's give the project a name. So something like leaderboard functions. Then select the same thing we selected. So .NET 6 with our HTTP trigger. Everything else with defaults. OK, let's create. All right, the project has been created with default function. Now let's first of all rename this. So over here on Solution Explorer, on the function, instead of calling it function one, let's call this add score. And yep, let's use Visual Studio to automatically rename the class and up here also add score. Okay, this is our function. And for now, let's get rid of all of this and pretty much just return a standard message. So let's get rid of all of this. And just up here, let's do a response message and just return something like success. Then over here on the log, again, like you saw, you can add anything. So let's say just add score. All right, so our extremely basic function is ready for publishing to Azure. However, one extremely, extremely important thing before you do, over here I showcase both methods. So first of all, creating a function with the browser ID and now using Visual Studio. I showcase both methods for learning purposes. However, if I now go ahead and publish this project to Azure, if I do that, then it will completely destroy the function that we made previously. Basically, when you publish a project from Visual Studio, it won't overwrite anything previously on the function app. So you either need to always use the browser ID for making every function or always use Visual Studio. You cannot mix them. So before we publish it, let's actually go and copy our previous function. So let's copy our get leaderboard function, which also means we have to copy our leaderboard structure. So up here, let's start with just that. So let's create and first of all, let's add just a new item. Let's go with an empty C sharp class. Let's call this leaderboard. Then let's copy our leaderboard class. And over here, let's paste it. OK, exactly the same thing. Now for creating the function, over here on the solution, let's right click on the project. And we're going to add, and this time, a new Azure function. Then let's name it get leaderboard and OK. Now for the type, let's go with the exact same thing. So an HTTP trigger authorization on the function. OK, add. So here we have yet another function. Let's just copy the code. So here on dashboard, let's copy exactly just this, just the log and all of this, copy it. And over here, let's replace all of this. There you go, just like this. Okay, so everything has been copied exactly. However, pay attention to what I did here. I only copy pasted the internals of the function. I did not override the function definition. That's important because over here, it's slightly different. You can see when making the function, over here, we've got the function name. Then we've got an HTTP trigger with a whole bunch of parameters. Whereas on the browser ID, it does not have those parameters, does not have function name and so on. Basically on the browser ID, all that data is on a separate function.json. So when copying, make sure you don't copy the wrong syntax. So with this, we have everything correct. So we've got our get leaderboard function, we've got the leaderboard definition and the add score function. And again, the reason why we need to add the get leaderboard function here is because the function that we created previously, that one is going to be overwritten as soon as we publish this project to Azure. And also one more tiny thing before we publish, we can actually test this project locally. 
So it's really simple, we just need to go up here and click on the play button to test. And yep, it opens up this nice command line window. And over here we can see all of the various endpoints that were created. As usual, these are standard localhost URLs. So for example, the get leaderboard here, let's just copy this. So just copy this URL, control C. Then over here on the browser, let's just paste our URL. And yep, the get leaderboard is working exactly the same as previously. Okay, so everything is working correct. Now we can finally publish. So on the Solution Explorer, let's right click on the project. Again, that's right click on the project, not the solution. If you right click on the solution, you don't see publish. So make sure you right click on the project and publish. Then for the target, let's go with Azure. We made a function app on Windows, yep. Then make sure you're signed in, make sure you select the right subscription. And then over here, you should be able to find it. So yep, here is our tutorial leaderboard code monkey function. So let's go ahead and select this one. All right, it's done creating the profile. So everything is ready for publishing. So just go ahead and up here, click on publish. All right, it's publishing. We can check the status down here on the output. Let's just wait a bit. All right, the function app is ready. So everything worked. Back in the Azure dashboard, let's click on refresh. Again, this might take a few tries to update, but yep, after refreshing, yep, you should be able to see both our functions. So we have the get leaderboard and the add score function. Now, both of these functions were published for our project. So what that means is that these functions are now marked as read only. So if I go inside the get leaderboard like we were seeing previously, on this one, we do see this little warning. So it says the package is in read only because you are running from a package file. If we go up here to code and test, yep, we do not see any code to edit. So like I said, the browser made version made previously, that one was completely overridden by the one we have in Visual Studio. All right, so everything should be working. So let's do a quick test. So over here on this one, let's go into test and run. For this one, let's use the get, let's use the function key, no query, no headers, no body, let's run. And yep, there's indeed our result. Okay, so far so good. Now let's also do another quick test on the add score function, just make sure everything is working. So back in the functions, let's go into add score. Let's test our function. And for this one, we actually enable both get and post, even though in the end, we're only going to enable post. But here, let's test out, send the post, let's send default function key, no query, no headers, no body, run. And yep, there's our success message. Okay, great, so far so good. Everything is working. Now let's call this from Unity. So over here in the Unity project, in the test leaderboard script, let's do a different input test. So input get key down, let's go with the Y key. Let's go into the web request class and let's do a post and this time use the post with JSON. So previously we did just a regular get, now we're going to do a post with JSON. Let's copy the URL with the function key. So we're here on the add score dashboard on the overview and let's wait for the get function URL to be clickable. Okay, and let's click, make sure we are using the function key and let's copy this. Then over here, let's paste our key. Then we have the JSON data that we're going to send. Again, right now we don't want to send anything. We just want to test this. So let's just send an empty JSON object. Then we've got the usual error success and so on. So let's actually copy this from this one. So let's copy that code, pretty much the same thing. So we've got an error, do a log, then we got the response and let's also just do a log. Okay, that's it. So let's test and run this. So here we are, let's press the button, wait a bit, and yep, there we have our response success. All right, great. So with this, we can now interact with both of our functions, one with get and one with post. All right, awesome. Now this is working, let's get to the second very important step, let's handle storage. Although like I said, if you don't have a free Azure trial account, then you already created the storage account during setup. So if you did that, then you can skip ahead this part, just verify that you have storage linked. But if you don't like me are using the free account, then let's go ahead and manually create it. So back into the Azure dashboard, let's create a resource. Then over here, let's find storage, which is right over here on the popular Azure services. So a storage account, that's what we want. Let's choose our Azure subscription for the resource group. Let's choose the same one. So the leaderboard tutorial, the same one that we created. Then let's give it an account name. Then for the region, for performance, let's go with standard. And redundancy, we really don't need anything special, so just locally redundant storage. Okay, so that's it, pretty simple setup. Let's review. And yep, everything is looking good, so let's create. Everything is deploying, let's wait a bit. All right, it's done, let's go to resource. And yep, here is our brand new storage, everything is correct. Now in Azure, the way that storage works is you have four types inside a storage account. You can see over here under data storage, the four types. You have containers, this is for blob storage, which is meant for storing binary files or text. Then you have file shares. This is if you want to use kind of like a virtual drive. You have queues, which is a simple way to queue and dequeue messages. 
And finally, tables, this is pretty much a NoSQL database. For our use case, we're going to use blobs and pretty much just use one file to keep our entire leaderboard. So let's go into containers, then up here and let's create a container, which is really basically a folder. So let's create it, call it leaderboard container. Let's keep it private with no anonymous access. Basically, we're going to use a key in order to read and write from this. Okay, let's go ahead, click on create. All right, we have our container. We can go inside and yep, so far the container is empty. Now let's upload our start leaderboard. Now you could write the code to automatically be smart enough to know if the leaderboard already exists or not. But in our case, let's keep things simple and just start with a pre-made leaderboard. So let's go to our get leaderboard function and just copy the default leaderboard we've been using. So over here, let's just press control S to save this file. So here I have my simple file. I just named it leaderboard.json. By the way, the extension doesn't really matter. So you can make it dot text or completely remove the extension. Doesn't really matter. For me, I'm going to add JSON just to make it easily identifiable. So here's the file. Now let's just upload it. So on the leaderboard container, let's upload, then select the file and just upload. All right, so the file is there. And over here, we can even see a bunch of stats from the file. And also on these buttons, we have button to edit. So this is super useful for testing. So over here, we can read the file and edit any of this data. Okay, so far so good. Everything's looking great. Now for connecting this storage account to our function, let's go back into Visual Studio and let's go into the Publish tab. And down here under Service Dependencies, we see something for storage. So let's click on these three dots and let's connect the storage. Again, make sure you're signed in and over here, select the subscription and it should automatically grab all of the storage. If not, go ahead and head on refresh. So over here, yep, I do see the storage tutorial leaderboard. So that's the one that I created just now. So let's select that one and click on next. Then let's sort it with the default connection string name. And here it should automatically grab the connection string from Azure. So it should look something like this. So default endpoints protocol, then account key, and there's your key. If it doesn't grab this automatically, then you can grab it from the dashboard. So on dashboard, if we go into the tutorial leaderboard into the storage, over here on the left side, we've got the access keys. And yep, over here, you can show and copy the connection string. But it probably already grabbed it by default, so we don't need to touch anything. Then let's save the string in the Azure app settings, and let's click on next. Then yep, let's select everything and finish. And yep, Azure storage is configured. Okay, great. Now we can verify that it worked by over here under hosting, click on the three dots and let's manage the Azure app service settings. And over here, you should be able to see the Azure web job storage. You should be able to see this string and here with our account key. Okay, so everything worked correctly. Now let's interact with our storage. Over here in the get leaderboard function, let's work with storage. Although for that, there are actually two methods that we can use here. So there's a manual method, which can be useful to learn if you want to use for interacting with blob storage from outside of functions. So for example, if you want to interact with it directly from Unity or any other c -sharp code, so that can be useful to learn. And then there's another easier method specifically made for easily integrating functions with blobs. So for learning purposes, let's learn about both methods. First, the generic method that can be used outside of functions. First thing we need is to grab the connection string from the environment variables where we added it just a while ago. So the string for the connection string. And we're going to into the environment. And let's get the environment variable. And default name is Azure Web Job Storage. If you don't remember the name or if you gave it a different name, just go up here into the publish, into the hosting, manage. And yep, this is the variable that we want to get. So we have our connection string. Then afterwards, let's grab our container name. So a string for the container name. And we named it leaderboard container. And now for connecting, we are going to need to make a new blob container client. This one is inside azure.storage.blobs. So let's create this one. It requires a connection string and then the container name. All right, we've got the container client and then inside let's get the blob client. And now we require the file name. So we called it leaderboard.json. All right, so with this over here, we have a reference to our file. Now let's download it. To download, we go up here and we call download. 
This returns a blob download info. Let's add using Azure storage blobs models. Then inside this one, we have the content and this is a stream for reading all the data. So let's read it. So let's do using a new stream reader. So let's make a new stream reader with the stream and let's just read to the end. So stream reader, let's read to the end. All right, so here we are reading the entire file. So let's get rid of the previous default leaderboard and set for the response message. Let's define it up here and then read it and paste it in there and then just return that one. Okay, that's it. So again, we grab the connection string. We define a container name. We get the container blob client. Then we get the blob client for the actual file we want to download and then just download the file and read the stream to read the whole contents. Okay, now before we can test, first just make sure the environment variable is correct. So again, up here under hosting, let's manage. So make sure this one is set. And also importantly, if we want to test locally, then let's make sure we copy the remote variable and paste it also over here on the local. We need to do this, otherwise when we test locally, it would be using emulated storage instead of actually grabbing it from the online storage. So just go ahead, do that, click on OK. So let's click play to test locally. Here we have our URL, so let's copy the get leaderboard. Let's copy this endpoint. And over here, let's go to that endpoint. And yep, we have our return value. Now let's just verify that it is indeed grabbing from the storage file. So on the storage account, let's go in the containers inside the leaderboard container. Then let's go inside the leaderboard JSON. Let's edit and let's change the name from Iron Man. Let's say Spider-Man. Okay, let's press on save. All right, then over here and let's refresh. And yep, there you go, it does work. So we have successfully confirmed that we are indeed grabbing the value from the storage. Now let's add the same storage connection to the add score function. So let's copy pretty much the exact same thing that we did here, since on the score we're going to need to read, then add, then save back. So let's copy all of this. Let's go into the add score function and let's paste it. Okay, we're doing the same thing, the same connection string, same container, same file. Let's read the file, yep. Then instead of reading it onto the response message, Let's make a leaderboard object, leaderboard. And then over here, we set the leaderboard equals, and we're going to use JSON convert. And we're going to convert, we're going to deserialize the object of type leaderboard. And the object is what we read from the file. Okay, so with this, we have our leaderboard. Now for the add score, let's just add a dummy score. So let's just go into the leaderboard, into the leaderboard single list. Let's add, let's make a new leaderboard. Then for the name, let's say Thor. And for the score, let's say 30. All right, so we add the new entry to our leaderboard. So now our leaderboard is indeed updated. So now to save the changes back, first of all, let's convert the leaderboard into JSON. So let's define a string for the save blob data. Let's go into the JSON convert. And this time let's serialize this object. So the leaderboard, okay. So we now have a string that we want to save. And for uploading, a good thing that we can use is a memory stream. So memory stream, let's do a new one. This requires a byte array, so we need to convert our string into bytes. So for that, let's use system.text.encoding. Let's encode into UTF-8. Let's get the bytes for this string. And that's the save ball data. All right, so we have a memory stream. And with the stream, we can now use the same blob client since we're going to upload to the same file. So on this one, let's call upload. This one takes a stream with our content, so that's our memory stream. And then the overwrite flag, we do want to overwrite what is there, so let's just overwrite. And after uploading, let's make sure to dispose of our memory stream. Okay, so this is going to upload our new data. And then for the response message, let's just print out what this one returns. So let's go into the blob client info and on this one, let's get the raw response. All right, so that's it. Let's test this. And for testing, let's make sure we have the get in here just to make it easier to test. And let's test locally. So let's just run the function. Here we have our endpoints is the same as previously. So let's first just refresh the get leaderboard, just refresh and yep, returns the same thing. So CodeMonkey56 and Spider-Man with 12. 
Now let's copy the at score endpoint. So let's copy this. Let's go there. And if there it is, here we have our response. So we've got a 201, so that's okay. And yep, it was created and so on. And now if we go back into the get leaderboard and now if we refresh this, and if there you go, here we have a brand new score and to our leaderboards. All right, awesome. Okay, so everything is working. Here we have the method for reading and writing to a blob storage. Like I said, this method, this code, you can run this from anywhere. Any c -sharp project, doesn't have to be just functions. But now let's see the other methods, specifically for using with functions and Azure connected projects, which is much, much simpler. But again, for learning purposes, let's not get rid of all of this. So let's actually duplicate these classes just so we have access to this code. So let's just duplicate both this. So the at score, let's duplicate this one. Let's call this one non-func. So for the non-function method, let's just make sure to rename the class. Okay, it's all good. Then for the get the leaderboard, same thing, copy paste. Let's rename this to non-func and for the function name and so on. Okay, great. Again, I'm just doing this so that all the code is included in project files. Now let's go into the get leaderboards class and over here let's use the second method. And for the second method over here on the run, we can receive another parameter. And for that parameter, we can use the attribute blob. And now here, if you cannot find the blob attribute, this is actually a very tricky part that took me quite a while to figure out. You can try to use the blob attribute. And then if you put the cursor on there, here Visual Studio tells you some potential fixes. And one of them is indeed this one in the package. Microsoft Azure Web Jobs Extension Storage. So you can go ahead and try doing this. However, nope, there's an error. It does not work. Basically what we have here is an error related to version mismatch. If on the Solution Explorer, we right click on the project and let's manage the NuGet packages. Then over here on the install packages, when we installed our storage, when we connected it, it automatically installed these packages. And as the time of this recording, that one automatically installed version 12.3 and over here 12.2. And if we search for the package that we're trying to install, so if you go over here into browse and let's go to search, search for Microsoft Azure Web Jobs Extension Storage. If we search for this one, then we find this package. As you can see, the latest stable version is 5.0.1. However, if you try installing this, then yes, install this one, yes, accept, and no, nope, tons of errors. Again, this is a, an issue with version mismatch. Basically, this version, version 5.0, requires a different version on the Azure storage functions. So the solution here is instead of installing the latest stable, you can install a previous one. The one that I found was version 4.0. Or another option is simply going to updates and let's update all of the packages. So all of these have updates. So let's try updating all of these. Let's click on update. Yes, make the changes. Yes, accept. All right, all of those were updated into the latest versions at the time of this recording. And with this, now if we go back into the get leaderboard and click on the attribute and let's use the quick actions to install the package and find the latest. And yep, we no longer have that error. The type is now being recognized. Believe me, figuring out these version issues, that took a ton of time, a ton of stress, trying to figure out why all of this was not working. So if you're finding this video helpful, please hit the like button, it really helps. Okay, so with that, we have the blob attribute. Everything is working correctly, so now let's use this. Now, over here, we can see the first one is going to be the blob path. So for the blob path, first of all, the container. So that's the leaderboard container. Then inside, we name the file leaderboard.json. Then for the file access, for this one on the get leaderboard, we just want to read. And then finally, let's also add the connection string. And again, let's use the same thing. So we stored it inside Azure Web Job Storage. Okay, so this is the attribute that is going to handle the connection for us. Then for the type of the parameter, you can check the docs for all the types that you can use. Over here on the docs for the blob attribute class, down here you can see all of the types that you can use. And for our case, for reading a simple text file, then string is super easy. So up here, let's make this a type string and call leaderboard blob string. Okay, that's it. So basically this one line, this is going to do pretty much all the code that we're doing here. So we can literally remove all of this code and we just return the leaderboard blob string. So with that, you can see the code is quite a lot simpler. It's literally just the attribute and everything is handled automatically. Okay, so now let's do the exact same thing on the add score. So let's copy our attribute. Then over here on the add score, okay, let's add another one. 
Again, for this one, we need to read and then we need to write. So for reading, let's do the same thing. We get a string. Then for another one, for this one, file access.write. We use the same connection string on the same file. OK. However, for writing, we cannot write onto a string. So for writing, the simplest one would be a text writer. All right, so now let's use this instead of all of this code. So instead of the connection string, container name, and all of that, so we get the leaderboard, yep. Then we create the leaderboard, and we're going to use JSON convert, and we're going to convert the leaderboard blob string. Okay, so let's convert this one. With that, we have the leaderboard. Then let's add a dummy thing. Then we serialize the object again in order to get the save blob data. And then for writing, instead of having to do all of this, let's just go into the leaderboard blob text writer onto this one. And let's just write, and we're going to write our save blob data. Then for returning, let's just return the save blob data. Okay, that's it. As you can see, super simple. Now, one quick note here, you might think you can simplify this further by just making one of these functions, one of these inputs, and using file access .read and write. However, if you use this, it doesn't actually work. If you do, you get an error, and the error is saying you cannot use read write on a blob attribute. So if you want to read and write, you must separate them into one read, one write. Okay, so as you can see, this compared to the previous code is much, much simpler. And also another extremely important note here, which is by defining this attribute for writing, by doing this, you are opening a writing stream, and if you don't do anything to this, then the file will still be written to, but it will be empty. So if you just add this attribute, this input, and then down here, you don't write onto it. So if you comment this out, it will still open that file and it will still be empty. So if you add the attribute with write access, make sure you actually write something onto it. Otherwise, the file will be empty. The reason why I'm making this note is because this confused me for quite a while. For testing, I first focused on making sure that the reading worked. So I didn't do this and I just read. Then on the second test that I did, I tried to write onto it and then I had an issue because the file was now empty. So don't make the same mistake that I did. Make sure that if you add a writing input, make sure you always write something onto it. All right, so we can do a local test just to verify that everything is still working exactly the same. Let's just rename this. Let's put the Hulk. Let's make sure all of our files are saved. Okay, let's run a local test. All right, it's running. So let's run the same thing. Over here for the get leaderboard, let's refresh. And yep, it still returns the exact same thing. Okay, great. Then for the add score, let's also refresh. And if there you go, it add the score. And this one, as you can see, it add the score and return the current state of the leaderboard. So this is going to help us prevent from having too many function calls. Just when we add the score, it automatically adds and returns the new leaderboard with all the scores. So now you'll learn both methods for interacting with storage mobs. You can use the first method. You can use this one in any c -sharp code. It doesn't have to be functions. So for example, you could use this code directly inside Unity. But if you're using functions, then you can use this second one, which is much, much simpler. All right, great. So with all of this, really all of the tough parts are done. Now it's just making the proper leaderboard logic and connecting it into Unity. So first, let's make our add score. Let's make this proper. So instead of having a dummy object, let's add something proper. We're going to receive JSON body in our HTTP request. So how we access that is we have the request.body. This one, as you can see, is a stream. So let's read this. So let's do a new stream reader. Let's read the request.body. Let's read to the end. So this is going to return our request body. Then let's just parse this into an object of type leaderboard single. Okay, so our request is going to be of type leaderboard single. And then we just do the exact same thing. So instead of adding a dummy leaderboard single, we add exactly just this one. So this one directly onto the leaderboard. And then everything else is exactly the same. So we've got the save blob data. So we serialize it, we write it, and return it. All right, so that's it. Super simple. And the get leaderboard function, this one is also already working correctly. Now let's just use the correct endpoints. So for the get leaderboard, we only want to get. We don't want to allow post. So let's save this. And on the add score for this one, we only want to allow post. So let's get rid of the get. All right, so with that done, let's publish this to Azure. So let's go into our publish and just click on publish. 
And now while that is publishing, let's go into our Unity project and let's still use our testing script just to make sure that it all works. So when we post, instead of sending some empty JSON, let's send some proper one. So let's create a new leaderboard single. Over here for the name, let's say Thanos with a score of one. So we've got a leaderboard single. And then over here for the JSON, let's convert that. So we use JSON convert and let's serialize this object. All right, that's it. Super simple. Let's test. Just wait for the function app to be ready. Okay, it's ready. Let's test. Here we are. Let's first grab the current score. So let's press on T. And yep, there's the current score. Okay, great. Now let's press on Y to add another score. And yep, there's the response. Now let's press on T again to get it again. And yep, there you go. Here's our new score. All right, awesome. So everything is indeed working. All that's left is just to add this logic directly onto the game over code. So here is my main target range class that is handling this mini game. So basically just counts down a simple timer and when the timer is elapsed, then we've got our game over state. Then on the game over, we show our nice input window. Again, I covered this window in a previous video. So on this one, we ask the player for the input and then over here, we've got the input string. So over here, let's submit our score. We can copy the exact same code that we have here. So let's copy all of this. Then over here, let's paste it. Then over here, let's use the player name that the player wrote. Let's use the score that was calculated. Let's add the using for the JSON convert. So we post JSON, we send this object with our new input string, new score. We log if there's an error and if there's a response and this is going to be the leaderboard. So if so, then let's do what we were doing on the previous test. So over here, we're going to pretty much do this. So deserialize the object and show it. So up here, when we have the response, let's do exactly that. So deserialize this object and then show the leaderboard. All right, so that's it, super simple, let's test. All right, so here we are and let's start the game and start shooting down some really nice targets, try to get the highest score possible. And the timer is counting down and one second, zero seconds, and there you go. Now write my name and now let's say that I'm Iron Man. Let's press on okay. There's our high score loading and yep, here is our high score. All right, awesome. So everything is indeed working perfectly. We connect to Azure, we upload our new score, which updates the file in storage, and then returns the updated state of the leaderboard and shows it over here in game. Okay, great. So the demo is perfectly working. Now I should point out some things if you want to build upon this demo. One of the main things is player identification. So right now this leaderboard is acting very much like an old school arcade leaderboard, meaning it's just adding names and scores. There's no score updating and the names can be duplicated. So if you wanted, you could add some proper user identification rather than just a name. For example, you could use Unity Authentication, which I also covered in a quick video or in more detail in my Ultimate Unity Overview course. With that Unity tool, you can get a unique ID for the player and then you can use that on the leaderboard, perhaps with an automatic player name. Then you could add logic on the leaderboard to update the score for the same player and keep the best instead of adding multiple entries for the same player with the same name. Another thing is over here on the show leaderboard function, over here it receives the leaderboard object and then manually sorts it, so the sorting happens locally. But another alternative would be to run this sorting logic on the function itself and perhaps only send the top 10 instead of sending the entire leaderboard. Although at the same time, I don't believe that bandwidth has a cost, so perhaps sending the whole thing and sorting it locally might make more sense. And one very, very important thing that you definitely need to add in order to use this code in production would be handling concurrency. If you have tons and tons of players and lots of functions running at the same time, then it would be possible for one at score function to be running this code. Then that at score function would be going right here, right about to upload the new values. And at the same time, another at score function would run and would once again grab the same values, which still hadn't been saved. And with that, the first at score would pretty much be lost forever. As a general rule, you really never want to lose any player data. So you definitely need to handle that use case. There's a really helpful page on docs showing multiple ways of solving that concurrency problem. So definitely check it out if you want to build upon this. Another thing related to that is to use the retry pattern. So if there's concurrency issues, maybe try again in a bit instead of just failing. Or if there's random connectivity issues, again, try maybe once or twice before returning a permanent failure. So adding this is definitely a must to help your game be much more stable, much more reliable. And in general, just check out the page with the best practices for Azure functions. It covers lots of tiny things to make your functions perform always at their best. So with all that, here we have everything working. We have our two functions, one to get the leaderboard and one to add some score. 
We're using Azure Storage to store our persistent leaderboard file. With those two together, we can read this file and add more scores onto it. And we can interact with all of that from inside Unity. And again, in terms of cost, this whole system is either completely free or only costing at most about one cent per month. So everything is really awesome. And now that you'll learn how to do this, you can do so many more things. Pretty much all of the interesting cloud-based mechanics that I'm going to showcase in the next video, all of them are all based on this general concept. It's pretty much all just based on having a simple Azure function that interacts with some storage and then interacting with those functions from inside Unity or really anywhere where you can make an HTTP request. Stay tuned for that video to see examples of the kind of interesting mechanics that you could build with the cloud. So now go ahead, take this newly acquired knowledge and build something awesome. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.